Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we gather in this place to receive the blessings that God has promised, especially this day as we remember those who have gone before us and thank and praise God for those blessings. We begin by singing the opening hymn. Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as 
it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white with the blood of the Lamb. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of love and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer her their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Defend us, gracious Lord. Chapter 7. 
After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the, the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and honor and worship and thanksgiving and power be and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? And I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulations. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. We read responsibly Psalm 149, which is the basis of our meditation for today. He said we speak, read responsibly half verse on half verse. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord in this song. It's praise in the Let Israel be glad in his maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in his name. Let them praise his name with dancing. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. Let the godly exult in glory. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. To execute vengeance on the nations. To bind their kings with chains. To execute on them the judgments written. The epistle reading is from 1 John chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that he it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be is not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. This, too, is the word of the Lord. We rise and sing together the common hallelujah and verse in preparation for the reading of the Holy Gospel. satisfied. 
Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be re shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. our faith in God using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated that we sing the hymn of the day. For all the saints who from their labors rest, who thee by faith before the world confessed, thy name, O Jesus, be forever blessed. Alleluia, alleluia. O blessed communion, fellowship divine, we feebly struggle, they in glory shine. Yet all are one in thee, for all are thine. Alleluia, alleluia. But, O oh, there breaks a yet more glorious day, the saints triumphant rise in bright array. The King of glory passes on his way. Alleluia, alleluia. From earth's wide bounds, from ocean's furthest coast, through gates of pearl stream in the countless hosts, singing to Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Alleluia, Alleluia. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let Israel be glad in his Maker, let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with salvation. This is our text. I'm very thankful that this day we sang for all the saints and that we understand what that really means. For all the saints who from their labors rest, they are people who have been sustained in their life on this earth. And often that's the best we can say. They made it through. They were faithful to the end because God helped their faith to understand that his promises were coming true. It's probably better that we sing that than another song that kind of a lot of people think about this day, which is, When the Saints Go Marching In. And you have to admit, I even attended one funeral once that used that song. But somehow that song does not have 
the sweet and tearful joy that we remember as we remember those loved ones who have gone to heaven before us. It's not easy to understand that. It's not easy to understand how God cares for us in this earth and how he promises us good in the, in the next life. But sometimes things just don't go that easily in this world. And sometimes like, well, this year for me and, and my wife, it's especially poignant to talk about the saints who from their labors rest. We lost too many of them this year. It's been a hard year for us. Sometimes when I see that, rather than think of all the lines that come from the psalm of today, which our text is, our sermon is based on, I think of, well, something that was said by Mark Twain. No good deed ever goes unpunished. Sometimes our life on earth seems that way. And yet we hear from this text today, this gospel that was echoed in our hymn for all the saints. And we hear what it says to us as God's people when we struggle, when times are hard, when losses are great, when things just don't seem to be going our way. Although I have to say, that Louis Armstrong and that bunch got one thing right. And I will e echo that one too. Yes, I want to be in their numbers when the saints go marching in. So today we look at that. We look at the people who have gone before us and we think about them. And we think about the blessings and the gifts that they left for us. How they raised us up. How oh, they brought us to the Word of God and taught it to us and made it an important part of our life. So that we saw that that's where life stems from. So that, yes, we can be joyful in the midst of sorrow. We can be joyful when times are hard. Because God indeed has promised us a future beyond imagination. Now one of the things about this particular psalm is that at first it might seem as though this is the kind of thing God expects to us when we, from us when we get to heaven. That we will praise him for his maker, that we will sing to the, from Zion for the rejoicing to the king. We'll dance and praise his name and we'll sing to him with melody, with a tambourine and a lyre. For we do know that God is and God will take pleasure in his people. And most of all, that he adorns us, our dresses, our life, no matter what it is, with salvation with redemption, with a promise of an impeccably bright future. You might think that this is, uh, the psalmist was writing about some future time. Well, until you get to the last part of the psalm. Let the high praise of God be in their throats and the two-edged sword in their hands. Well, in case you it might seem familiar to the that two-edged sword also comes up in Revelations where the Lord Jesus Christ comes before the world in judgment with a two-edged sword proceeding from his mouth. You've come to understand that that two-edged sword is the Word of God which cuts both ways. Which cuts in judgment, yes, but even more so cuts in mercy and grace with the gift of redemption and salvation. But it's the rest of the psalm that wakens us to execute vengeance on the nations and punish the peoples, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them their judgment written. This is the honor of all his godly holy ones. Praise the Lord. That might seem like a vindictive psalm. 
And yet, as we think about it, sometimes we have to admit that some that the times that are hardest on us or when things seem to be going the worst or when things just don't work at all, if we look back on them later, we realize that these are the times when God was calling to us. When because of our nature we got wrapped up in our own lives and so many things were going in our own ways and we got too concerned with today to remember where we're going. Where our journey is headed. God calls to us in that way. I know I've said this many times before and I'll say it again. There's two things that you don't pray for lightly. Now I don't say you don't pray for them. But you don't pray for them lightly. One is patience. And the joke about that is God give me patience and give it to me right now. The only way God can make you patience, have patience is to make you be patient. And the other is for a stronger faith. Because the thing that God is going to do is strip away from you all the other things that you depend on so that you have to have faith in Him. Now, unfortunately, yeah, there are times when God knows in His wisdom that we need to have our strength, faith, and our faith, and our faith strengthened or at least to have it brought and held before our eyes so we understand how important it is to us. And these are moments when we stop and think about it. Like I said, it's been a hard year in my wife and I and some other people too. That one of the things that you may have noticed is I have been praying for my Aunt Ruth who for all practical purposes, nearing the end of her life, but we have been praying for her for about two months now. That sometimes, even though when I talk to my cousins and they tell me that, yeah, she's kind of even questioning why she's still here. Kind of saying, why doesn't God just take me home? All her brothers and sisters are gone. Probably 99% of the people that she knew through her life are gone. It doesn't seem to hold much for her anymore. And I know I have previously visited people in nursing homes that were in this same position. And they asked me, and one of them especially when I was a vicar, asked me, Vicar, why am I still here? This doesn't make any sense. The man was blind, uh, he had trouble eating, and he couldn't walk. It just, he just couldn't understand why he was still here and that's when as a vicar or a pastor you kind of go, I don't know. But you can also assure them of one thing, whatever the reason, it's not just God proving that he's God. God doesn't beat up on his children that way. If you're here, it's for a purpose. If you're here, it's because there's somewhere out that, someone out there at least that needs you to be here. Of course, the reverse is true, and on this day we think of those cases. All those people we wish were still here. I mean, today I think of June because you know, she was so dear to me. I mean, I call her my mom. I know she was my mother-in-law, but that part of that relationship had straightened itself a long time ago. And I mean, there have been days lately when I, yeah, yeah, it's been like, Mom, why did you go? We sure could have used you now. But that's God's purpose and His will. And maybe at this point it's the best for us to look at those people and remind, have them remind us exactly of where we're headed. So that once again when all this seems to be troubling and hard and even sometimes hurtful and you kind of look up toward heaven and go, 
Is this really necessary? It's when that, when the verse comes to mind, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that this is for the best. Remember those who have gone before you and take from them the comfort that I sustained them through their lives. I will sustain you through yours. But you're going the same place they went. And yes, they brought you this far on your path and so many times they were the source of many blessings of God. Now those blessings don't stop. But they just don't seem to be quite as handy. They just don't seem to be quite as certain. So that again we look at this and we, we understand that yes, as the song says, we feebly struggle, they in glory shine. But the important part of that is what comes after it. The King of Glory passes on his way. He comes by us. His way is integral with ours. He never leaves us alone. And maybe that's the most shining example that we draw from them. That no matter where we go, we are never far from God. There was a soldier in England in, well, the days of nights of yore, I guess. And he was going out to a battle, I don't think it was Agincourt, but it might have been. A battle where he knew there was going to be fierce, fierce fighting and, you know, the ending was nowhere near certain. His prayer that day was, Lord, I am going to be very busy today. And knowing my ways and knowing that I'm a human, there will be times during this day when I will forget about you. I praise you that you will never forget about me. And God is there constantly. There is no time when we are away from Him. As we look at all the joyful things that this psalm directs people of God to do, we understand that this is a response. This is a response to the wonderful things that God has done for us and is doing for us and will continue to do for us. But as we look at it on this day and we think about all those people who have gone before us and we treasure them for the blessings they were to us from God. And we even look yearningly to that time when we will rejoin them in God's heavenly kingdom forever. And we understand fully that that will come sooner than we think. Or in some ways, like it says, this, short, this, di this difficulty of ours lasts for the evening, but the glory of God comes in the morning. Tomorrow we will return to our place before Him. Just as He daily invites us to do. So that on this day, the day of all saints. And we remember saints back to, well, the time of Christ, really. Because they have been the pipeline, if you will, of God's information and love toward us. It has flowed through them to us. As we look at those saints, we know that we will be with their number. For God will take us to heaven to be his own for all eternity. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto eternal life. Amen.
we rise and sing together the offertory. and pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, Lord for the deliverance from all harms, the body that's, that's, and the souls, the soul, and for trust to commend ourselves, our bodies, and all things into the, handful, into the hands of the faithful God. Let us pray to the Lord. For all ministers of the gospel, for the congregations that they have been committed to their care, that they may proclaim the comfort of Christ's sacrifice and the joy of his resurrection to all who grieve their sins and mourn their dead. Let us pray to the Lord. For fathers and mothers, that they would be strengthened to raise their children in the faith. For all who long for families, that their prayers would be answered and for expectant mothers and their little ones, that they would be preserved and protected, let us pray to the Lord. For all in authority over us, especially those who work to bring peace and justice, that God would supply them with his blessings, that they might be inclined to do his will and to walk according to his commandments, and that they would be granted wisdom to enter his, to care for his citizens and that they might have courage and confidence as our leaders. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are sick, suffering, or recovering from illness or injury, especially Brandon, Betty, Vereen, Rick, June, Casey, Sean, Pam, and Stephen, and Pastor Winterfeld, and all those who we raise up before you now in our hearts. For the long-term homebound and those in nursing homes, including Rick and June, that the Lord would be their rock and fortress in distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Eternal Father, you alone make the decisions concerning life and death. We ask you to show mercy on your servant Ruth, whose death seems imminent. If it be your gracious will, restore her and lengthen her earthly life. But if not, keep her in her baptismal grace and in your abiding care. Give her a repentant heart, a firm faith, and a lively hope. Let not the fear of death cause her to waver in confidence and trust. At your chosen time, grant her a peaceful departure and a joyous entry into everlasting life with the glorious company of all your saints. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who are nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son, that they would be raised to immortality and incorruption and to be seated with him in his heavenly banquet, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those who mourn the loss of those they love, especially those who mourn Judy, Pat, and Lawrence, Ron, Vitra, Gail, Barb, Norma, June, and Hugh, Terry, Cornelia, uh, Elaine, and uh, Leland, Olive, and Daniel, and Paul, and that we would be brought at last to the place of everlasting light and life to see God face to faith in, in the presence forevermore. 
Let us pray to the Lord. All these things and whatever else you know we need, grant us, Father, for his sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated and we sing the communion hymn.
Take, eat, this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given unto death for your sins. Take, drink, this is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. The body and blood of our Lord strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the true faith unto everlasting life. Amen. Oh, 